Don't have to. Dad's got two squirrels down there he's going to put in the electric pressure cooker. Going to cook him for a couple hours so he can have squirrel tomorrow. And then he'll make a white gravy. Doing great. He's got his oxygen on. I didn't even have to tell him. What are you looking for? Hair? <laughs> oh, God. Probably Once you skin them, they look no different than a, a cat or a rabbit or about anything. Yeah, you have to go over them. Turn this light on, a little switch. Thank you. We'll check out what settings. He said he just puts it on meat setting. Check it out. He's also, you know, like Keurig, air fryer. Can't get him to use a smartphone though. Still flip phone. When did the squirrels come back in Kentucky after the depression kind of wiped them out? Because people ate too many of them. Yeah. But well, when did they come back? The squirrels never did go away. Oh, they didn't? The deer and turkey did. And bear. Yeah. I've got a missing part. Oh. Well, there you go. Then that keeps them off the bottom. That's right. Cook it the same way you do your chicken. Mm -hmm. It's also got some chewing tobacco in there. <laughs> go, go take a break. In the meantime, we will watch water fill up in a pot. Could play some Jeopardy music right now. He's wandering back in here. Are you making sure the water is over the meat? How'd you decide how much water's enough? Five eighths full. Five eighths full. Oh Lord. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't want too much. But you gotta have a little. Okay. You have to lubricate this with the seal with water, and it makes it get to lead real good. You gotta put it down in here, put the seal in the lid like so, and it has to be really down really good then you uh, uh, put this handle over here at the unlock and set it down and uh, it locks in place and then over here push meat Okay, it's set for 35 minutes. That's 
cooking time. That's 35 minutes of pressure cooking. Then it will start, uh, once it starts, that number will be four, three, it counts down to zero and then shuts itself off. Now, a piece of secret is uh, uh, you've got pressure and then, then put it over there and it'll let the steam off for you. But right, it's got to be set right there, those two dots in line to cook. And that's all I have to, you don't have to touch it. You want to move it around? No, we're good. And you can do pork ribs, and it's got one for poultry, and, uh, and uh, uh, poultry, that's chicken, turkey, ducks, geese, whatever, any kind of bird, push that button, and it's 15 minutes. And uh, so, so if you want to make homemade soup, put all your stuff in there, push soup. I don't know what the time on it is, but uh, I wouldn't want to make soup. You could. I'd rather cook it on the top of the cook stove in a big kettle. But this is nice, though, because if somebody forgets to turn off a stove or gets distracted... This just stops. Yeah, I can make a gallon of soup right here in this and never have to touch it. Yeah. Dip it out and eat. Yeah. Uh, but then, after you've had your uh, meat in your sink, you have to take soap and water. And surely, I don't care if it's wild game, fish, chicken, bacon, whatever kind of meat you lay in this sink, it has to be washed with soap and water or uh, you'll get salmonella, salmonella or something. Salmonella. Salmonella. <laughs> you were kind of close. We knew what you were talking about. Yeah. This eliminates food poison. And it can stay there for days. But if you wash it with soap and water, it's clean. That's something you want to always remember. Uh, I don't care what it is. Any kind of meat. Uh, it's very dangerous. But uh, you throw it in the pot and cook it, that kind of purifies it. Uh, it won't hurt you to eat it, but left over in the sink, put your dinner plate in there, you can contaminate the, your forks and spoons and plates and everything else. And so it may be 30 minutes before this would heat up and the numbers start cooking, mm -hmm. going down. And, uh, uh, You'll get to go watch a good movie and don't have to worry about it. Yeah. And uh, it's cooked meat. If I stayed in there all night and I never touch it till tomorrow morning, it's still good, healthy meat. It won't spoil for several hours. Uh, it's just a neatest thing. Uh, I've talked to the kids about I've got so many other extra stuff. I'm thinking about selling my cook stove. <laughs> Drag it out to the <laughs> sidewalk and sell it. <laughs> I don't need it. <laughs> yeah. I'm real happy with it. Uh, you're, br you're breathing so much better doing all those chores, <laughs> wearing your oxygen. It's so good. Come over here and, and show. Okay. Show. Now, this was made... My son Tim is a carpenter. He's so good at carpenter work, he can take two toothpicks and a match stem and fill your living room with furniture or a bedroom. 
uh, he made this when he was in the uh, uh, military. It's a homemade bread box. And my granddaughter Ashley, which is his daughter, gets it when I die. So it'll stay in the family. There's your leftovers to feed the squirrels in the morning. Uh, now I got I need to throw that out. Uh, half of it. I feed the nine animals. And then I leave a little for the day birds. Okay. Yeah. That's nice. And don't ever, don't ever throw a piece of food if something can eat it. Don't throw it in the trash can. Throw it outside. You got birds, raccoons, skunks, squirrels. And if they don't want it, the worms will come up and eat it. So don't throw away food. Don't waste it in the trash can. Uh, uh, because there's too many things that's hungry out there running around. And uh, uh, that's something my mother taught me when I was about 15 years old, 14. Don't ever waste a piece of food, not even one little crumb of cornbread or nothing. If you don't want it, throw it out in the yard. Front yard just good as the backyard. Because these animals will clean it right up. Uh, we'll take this outside. I'm going to show you what I do with it. It's dark outside. Ooh. But I'm going to give Scurry. half of this to the night shift animals and then I, I'll save some for the daytime. Look at that good looking family up there. <laughs> That's us in the 1980s. Oh yeah. Okay. All you have to do is just get a hold of it with your hand and throw it out in the front yard. About half of it. Probably have a skunk family come up. And then this leaves a uh, uh, stuff for the birds tomorrow morning. Mm. You got to have birds. They eat the worms and bugs. They eat your garden veggies. You got to keep the birds happy. And uh, uh, you feed these critters in the winter time, cold weather, more than you do in the summer. Yeah, in the summer, they'll come and eat your garden. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, we're all going to go to bed. You go watch a good movie. Okay. Uh, if you don't have an electric pressure cooker... Do whatever you have to. Go without shoes and socks and save up enough money to buy you one. Because it'll be the, one of the handiest things in the kitchen. Uh, they're so much better than the old type pressure cookers you had to put on the stove. Uh, fast, convenient, easy. Uh, so I highly recommend a, an electric uh, pressure cooker. And here's some more stuff, uh, another tray that goes with it. Uh, you can put food in that. They even throw down a big spoon to stir it with. <laughs> so. Okay. Alrighty, that's the end of the video. Bye. Oh, okay. My name is Alan Lester Halcombe from Gordon, Kentucky. And y'all have a good day now. Bye.